Today our discussion topic on Autogefühl is about crossover wagons. They have this crossover or off-roadish look. They are somewhat between SUVs and normal estates. They are put up a little bit higher and they often have special interior features with unique styling and so on. And they are called all-road, all-track, all-terrain, cross-country, cross-turismo, active and scout. And this is the Škoda Octavia Scout here in this new generation. You can see the crossover styling in the lower area with the contrasting silver. I think it works very well. What's your take? Also a functional crossover thing is that we have an underbody cover right there in the front. And you can see here in the new generation, the Octavia has the front grille which leads over to the headlamps. They are standard with LED and standard for the Scout version is the otherwise option, the Matrix LED with a nice blue color here for today. And usually these crossover wagons come with huge wheels. That again speaks for more city kind of use, not so much off-road use. 18 inch wheels or 19 optional, but today we have 17 inch winter tires here because still winterly conditions. Yeah, that's more off-roadish then, also a softer riding comfort. And speaking of riding comfort, usually a softer suspension. 15 millimeters higher, an option you can also go for the DCC, the adaptive suspension dynamic chassis control, but that one is still set higher than here with this vehicle. 4 meters 69 or 185 inches is the length of the Škoda Octavia, this is mid-size segment, although it is on a compact platform. Then in the rear you can see the modern tail lamps here in this new generation and once again the Scout look here in the lower end with the contrasting silver. Scout always reminds me of Quake World Team Fortress, by the way. Yeah, I used to play that back in the days. And what about the trunk? Directly right here, the estate form. Usually this crossover look is combined with the estates. There was one example where we had the Volvo S60 cross country, but um, yeah, that was back in the days with the previous generation. Height here, up to the cover, about yeah, almost 20 inches and a little bit less than 50 centimeters. And the length we have here is about 42 inches, a little bit more than a meter. And the width, that's always very important. Also, once again, a meter or 40 inches. So, very well usable in the trunk. But let's first take a look now at one of the competitors, direct and indirect competitors, really more interesting crossover wagons there on the market. And here's a short overview for you. There's the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain in this big segment, just as well as the Audi A6 All-Road, very popular one, and the Volvo V90 Cross Country. Yeah, even Porsche goes in this crossover look now with the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo in their EV segment. And then the segment below that, in the mid-size segment, there's the Volvo V60 Cross Country. We have the Volkswagen Passat Alltrack. Yeah, the Passat Alltrack, as you can see, it really can do some soft off-roading. And the Audi A4 All-Road. Yeah, that was such a beautiful scenery right there in the Alps. Just so lovely, really looking back to this shooting. And then a little bit smaller and even more affordable, there's the VW Golf All-Track that came recently for the Mark 8 Golf generation. And a direct competitor would be the Ford Focus Active. And then we have the Subaru Outback. It does not need any additional name. It's just the Subaru Outback. It directly comes as being a crossover wagon by itself. Yeah, and it's the most popular one in the US. Well, and Skoda has been with these crossover wagons for quite some time. For example, in the Skoda Superb Scout. Yeah, that's a lovely sunflower, definitely is. And one of the most sold crossover wagons is the Skoda Octavia Scout. So tell me, what is your favorite crossover wagon? Tell me in the comments. Maybe is it that one? Well, engines here for the day for the Skoda Octavia Scout. Either you have a 2-liter TDI diesel with all-wheel drive, 200 horsepower, we have that one here today. Or you can also get the 1.5-liter turbo petrol engine, that then front-wheel drive only. Two more interesting details here in the, or under the hood here, the gas struts. The Octavia still gets it, the Golf 8 does not. And Skoda always claims these simply clever features, that's marketing speech, but Indeed, they have some clever solutions here, for example, a funnel for the fluid for the water in the front, for the wiper fluid here. 
There we go, so fold it up, and then you have a funnel, can easily put in the water without spilling anything. So really interesting solution. This is the car key, slim and light, but ah, these high gloss accentuations here, mm, I don't know, don't like it that much. What about you? Door closing sound, really solid like that. Then inside of the doors here with soft touch material, so good build quality and also this structure inside, very well done. These are some of the small detail features by Škoda that they have a small trash bin right there. And then we have this wooden design here and with fabric covering of the dashboard, really cool, soft touch here as well. What kind of, do you see a face or something? Or what kind of structure do you see in this steering wheel? Not sure, but it's an open spoke design. So I'll leave it to your fantasy. But the most special thing about this vehicle are the seats. Special Scout seat styling, either in a brown look, but you can also get a black look if you prefer that. And this is a special Thermoflux material. Here is the Thermoflux batch. And that means this fabric here is specially breathable, but at the same time, it also feels so great that when you like touch it here with your fingers, it feels like a memory foam pillow you use for sleeping. Really cool. And then also with some microfiber insets and the Scout stitching. So yeah, one of the most awesome fabric seats we've seen so far. And they are indeed super comfortable no matter if it's short or long term. So yeah, really happy with these seats. And one with 86 or 601 still leaves a lot of headroom and steering wheel control in and out, up and down. Very smooth process. Interior overview, 10.25 inch screen on the left, digital instruments, always standard. Right side here with the Scout, the bigger infotainment system with the 10 inch is standard as well. And then we have the nice fabric covering here at the dashboard. That's one of the highlights together once again with the wooden look. And then we have some hotkeys right here to have access to the infotainment system without touching everything. But most is done by a touch, definitely. Left side on the steering wheel, we have steering wheel heating and also controls for the cruise control right here. Digital instruments, they are quite flexible because you can change the view and also have the map here all over the place if you like. Infotainment unit, it's a clear view, but what I don't like is here, you have to change the temperature on the screen. That's not so good to do it while driving. Yeah, and also the volume slider is in the lower part here. Mm, yeah, also not the best solution, but at least you can change the volume at the steering wheel. And the voice input is not working today, not sure why, but at least they have used some software updates so that the responsiveness of the system and, you know, less fails, so to speak, because VW, Seat and Skoda recently had a lot of software problems here with their new systems, but the new updates fixed that a little bit now. Meanwhile, Apple CarPlay integration looks like this awesome song. And this Canton sound system, by the way, is um, really pretty nice considering the segment here. So overall, I think when they have fixed the software, the overview of the menu structure and so on is okay. Head up display, interesting option that you can always have the speed and the allowed speed in your line of sight. Lower middle console, inductive charging mat, but also two USB-C chargers, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both with cable or wirelessly as you just like. Then here, the DSC shifting lever, dual clutch transmission, shift by wire, so really fast transitions from drive to reverse and back again and so on. Pretty interesting. Then adaptive cup holders. You can also have an insert here for coins and for a smartphone or so, but you can also just remove it like this. And then there's the armrest, very well attached and more space underneath. And Skoda drivers know it for your personal Rolls Royce feeling. You also have these umbrellas at the inside of the door. So yeah, that's my rolls for today. Rear compartment, you have these manual shades and then hard pack material at the inside of the doors, but we have a lot of great solutions here. First of all, these Thermoflux seats here also at the rear. Again, memory foam design and also really feeling very cool with this microfiber and fabric mix right there. I fix at the outsides each for the child seat. And then really interesting features. You can get this pack that you have the sleeping options for the head restraints in the rear. That looks like, you know, like, yeah, like some horns. But the cool thing is really that when you fold them out, your head is being kept tight. And you remember when your children are sitting here in the rear and you have this typical sleeping situation that I get tight and... Or like this, or it's, um, you know, that you have it like this all the time, and then you wake up and you're like, oh my god, my neck is killing me. So, this is a really cool feature. 
really appreciate it. In the middle console here, we have two USB-C chargers, seat heating as an option, and also a real power socket. That's nice. And once again, another accessory here. You have this inbuilt blanket, and this, of course, then is a good additional feature to the whole sleeping package. And yeah, it's actually quite cozy here, this blanket. And you see that uh, for the rest of the day, I'll skip the shooting and um, yeah, good night, guys. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge, Skoda Octavia Scout. And we invite you today here on a countryside tour to give you some interesting shots, some nice corners, and of course the driving experience of this vehicle and really finding out in the driving experience why are crossover wagons so popular. And we also head on out to our German motorway site, high-speed autobahn, to see how this car here performs at high speeds. And there's also the question about the crossover wagons. Where are they between the SUVs and the normal low sitting cars. So and the first thing you notice is you have these suspensions that are put up higher, same as is here. You can optionally get the DCC dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension for this vehicle. Then it's still also set a little bit higher and you feel that indeed you you feel this elevated position. It's not as high as you know it from an SUV, but it's not as low as you know it from the normal estate wagon or from a normal sedan or something. And I really feel that this compromise in between is really nice. So it's not that the car would shake up too much here in a normal driving mode, especially when you have adaptive suspension, you can also get to the sports mode. Then the suspension is a little bit stiffer and it doesn't lean up that much still it remains comfortable in any position and the good thing is when we're here on a nice country, countryside tour we can drive it somewhat sporty so it's not like with some of the SUVs where you say it runs straight very well gives me good comfort but yeah cornering is not so much fun here you can still have some fun in the corners especially when the suspension is adaptive at the same time, when you keep it rather steady, calm and relaxed, you say like, yeah, this gives a little bit more comfort and overview than I would have in a normal vehicle. And I think this sweet spot in between is what makes it so popular, you know? So, because not everyone loves SUVs and want to go too far away from the normal car experience, yet again, delivers some more comfort or if you want to, get in and out a little bit easier for the vehicle and I can also just stress it here in the driving experience it's just a somehow pleasant feeling driving it a little bit more relaxed but at the same time if you want to have some sporty corners that's perfectly possible so and also when you think about heading to the motorway very soon when you drive high speed on the motorway SUVs tend to feel a little bit shakier and the low sitting cars feel a little bit more secure and this one here once again in between the cars that are somewhat all-rounder and that might also be the reason why the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo was very popular recently in the release people saying like yeah that's what we have been waiting for cars that are there to do everything with you know so a very good all-round experience steering feel by the way is very soft and comfortable for the normal daytime experience. Uh, it's not equipped with a dead zone area though, so there's always a command following in every angle. Sport mode, it, it gets a little bit more feedback. That's also quite likable. As for this two liter TDI we have here today, all we drive some six to seven liters on 100 kilometers. That's towards the 40 mpg region. So more than 40 mpg UK, less than 40 mpg in on the US scale, but there's also 1.5 liter petrol engine available here and then with front wheel drive. This one here, however, all wheel drive, Haldex coupling, so it means when I hit the throttle, also torque is being sent to the rear wheels, but front wheel bias nevertheless. Beautiful countryside road here for you to enjoy. 
can very well read the, uh, the both the head display and the digital instruments so everything very well in my line of sight visibility is also still quite good the back mirror could be a little bit larger though but overall it's really a pleasant experience and i hope you also enjoy this countryside riding here with me today so overall a very good all-rounder driving feeling and that's indeed what we experience also with the other crossover wagons and once again that might be just the sweet spot why people like it in a driving experience now motorway time there it is the most german-ish way of driving a car hitting the autobahn and going full throttle that's what we do here right not no not always not sometimes so sports mode and we start at uh, yeah, 35 kilometers an hour, let's go. So that's 180 kilometers an hour, so like 110 miles an hour. And that's enough for now, and I'm in the sport mode, so suspension is also set on a stiff note, and it's quite, you know, quite silent in here, considering the speed. Lane change at high speeds here in the sport mode is still totally fine, that's the difference then to the SUVs. And, I mean, we have the small wheels here also today, and winter tires, 17 inch and winter tires, so of course not, not the most direct feeling as for the wheels, but suspension wise that's totally fine. And I'm still feeling somewhat safe here at higher speeds and that's once again the tricky with the crossover wagons. They don't feel too wobbly <laughs> on the road than some of the SUVs with, I mean, there are SUVs with sport suspension, so like a Porsche Macan or something that even feel sportier and safer high speed motorway than the, some of the crossover wagons do, you know, but, but we're not talking like these super high expensive sports cars here or something or sports SUVs still remain in the rather affordable segment and here i have to say once again in the motorway especially when you have the adaptive suspension where you can also adjust it a little bit you you, you still feel absolutely fine when driving the vehicle also at higher speeds also speaks here for the octava octavia in general that remains rather calm and collected also high speeds and yeah interesting good noise insulation as well Now the conclusion for today, Skoda Octavia Scout, and in general, do these crossover wagons work? I think yes, because design-wise you get something more unique, and looking at the contrasting features right there, it just adds you know, some more spice to these wagons, and the estates in general, they were always like, ah, you know, that's this boring family thing, and don't you want to have it a little bit more fancy and go for an SUV? Well, you don't have to if you go then for a crossover wagon, so you have a classic estate, but a little bit more spiced up. With some more soft off-road character, that's of course an additional plus then. Interior-wise, of course, cool to have some more unique features there, for example, with the seats, especially good here today with the Skoda Octavia Scout. And driving-wise, it's really a thing. You can have this more upright seating position or a little bit higher feeling while driving, at the same time, you don't go for an SUV yet, and I think that's also what makes this segment here so special. What is your favorite crossover wagon? Please tell me in the comments, and also, what are you thinking today about our Skoda Octavia Scout? See you next time.